All right, welcome to this week's Snake Draft or Adopt the S Curve episode 10. We've got a good one today. We are going to talk about the best tips and tricks that have helped us get to where we're at in crypto, had the success that we've had, avoid some of the mistakes that we have made. So we have brought on Lindsay the Hexican and Sprue. So I will bring them up. Hey there. How are you, Sprue? How's it going? All right. All right. All right. All right, sir. You know, Good. this NFT musician and whatnot and keeping it all together, making sure that spirits are high, positive energy. I set my intention for today. So I just um, want to make sure that everybody sets their intention, set a positive mode and make sure that you're in your zen. No pun intended. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I like that, Sprue, because you're very positive. I try to be very positive. And boy, is it a week where we need some positivity. Not to mm. like... Not to drown out the real world, but to remember that when the times that have been the best to buy in crypto have been mm -hmm. when everybody's convinced it's over. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I think we're finally here. The price chart isn't matching. And that's one thing that was different than in 2018. When it was really bloody in the news, it was bloody on the price chart. Mm -hmm. But it's just, this has been a weird... I mean, everything's weird. What's going on at the banks is weird. Um, and so we'll we'll get into that a little bit. I think some of the tips and tricks will help. But mm -hmm. yeah, I appreciate that. We will need the positivity from you. So, um, But and then Lindsay, Hexican Lindsay, how are you? Good. How are you guys? It's good to be here. Great, great. And you are with Vibra Finance. So we asked for the best of the best. I, when I have people on, I always try to hit them up for an interview later. And then I will ask them, like, who, who should we have on? And Fashion Coder gave us one name. And she's like, if you really want a great guest, go get Hexkin Lindsay. So we did. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. um, how, tell us about your Yeah, we got her. <laughs> Tell us about your show earlier today. Um, earlier today, I did a show introducing Corium and talking about the mainnet launch coming on March 24th. There's multiple airdrops coming down the pipeline. One of them will be Xcore, and they will be dropping Xcore to Corium, Sologenic, and XRP. So um, when I see that kind of community activity and taking something built on the XRPL ledger and then taking it to the next step, turning it into a, a quicker, faster, interoperable layer one, I want to share that with my friends. So made a little video. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. And then that video, it's a good one. It's short. It's, it's like 20, 25 minutes. And there's a good little video at the end, I think from Corium. And they like a little uh, 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 teaser video on an event they're going to be holding, right? Do I have that correct? Oh, yeah. Cornova no. is coming up. It's on March 24th. It's in LA if you're out there. Um, it is the opportunity. I, I am really so sad that I can't go, but I am so excited that Fashion Coder is taking my place. And mm -hmm. Justine Black from KSB TV, she's going to, and they're going to go out and hard, bring some communities together and share love and information. I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. Caitlin cool. is cool. I love, I love Caitlin. She's cool. Yeah. I mean, That's honestly, cool. if I could have, if I could have handpicked, I, I don't know if I could have handpicked like two people that have such great energy to go out there and meet, meet the ground and, and, you know, bridge communities together. That's great. Well, but very good. I encourage everybody. I put it down there, but if you just go to Vibra finance, it's um, I think the third to last video they do, they have a lot of content and it was from today. So um, yeah, the you title can, if, is, you can pull it up. Luke, I got it. I got it. I'm sharing my screen right now. Let's just pull it up really quick. Just to shield a little bit at the beginning. Boom. Yeah. There you go. Getting started with crypto eight steps to success. Fiberfinance.com. Oh, there's such a need for the fundamentals of education and getting started. And I really took the why behind why buy crypto and went straight to the what you need to do to get started safely today. 
So that's what that workbook is for. It's to help you as an experienced crypto user go back and break it down and be like, okay, they have no idea what an NFT means. They have no idea what a digital wallet is. They don't know what a cold storage wallet is. So that very basically walks you through step-by-step -step how to get started. So you can take that to your onboards and say, listen, um, instead of 25 you know, phone calls and six hours of my precious time, here is a workbook. And then when you're ready and you need some help with it, or if you do need help, you shouldn't need any help with it. It's, it should be complete. You should be able to walk through that yourself. But if you get if you get tricky, it's a lot easier handing that to an onboard or a newbie in crypto than it is to you know facilitate all that communication back and forth. So just an easier step That's for everyone. Cool. I love it. You're yeah, doing. Cool. I'll go, I'll, I'm going to go get that book because that's one thing that I was talk, talking with Fashion Coder. I was like, I have troubles undegening and really breaking <laughs> it down for people who have, in like layman's terms, for people who don't, have no idea what's going on. So, yeah. It's, um, when, you, when you get started, it is absolutely, unless you're already, and I'm talking about for the people, like this book was written for people who have zero. Um, zero knowledge about crypto and it's like really geared towards people that are lacking a, um, a oh, let's say like an overall well-rounded sense of um, financial literacy we'll say not like mm -hmm. uh, that's not I don't mean that to be insulting either I just mean that it's a no frills way to get somebody started and I'm speaking their language because yeah. I was there too and I want you to feel like you know you well how do we get people to stay here we get them to mm -hmm. feel comfortable and confident with their own abilities. You know, you can, you can teach a man or you can feed a man a fish, you know, that's thing, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. Teach him. Yeah. You can. Yeah. I, what I love about what you're saying is Gary V has said many times, I listened to a lot of Gary V and he's saying the guys who make the biggest mistakes with the most amount of money are doctors. They, they pay the most in taxes when they could just simply, they could structure things differently and keep a lot more of their hard earned money. So when it comes to statements like what you just made, um, it absolutely is not anything other than just to support and help. Because if there's a tip or trick that's going to help me keep 1% more of my money, tell me like, <laughs> like I, mm -hmm. I am, we should all be humble enough to know that there are, there've got to be tips and tricks that we're just not aware of that are going to help us succeed more, keep more, gain a little bit more. more. And that That's really, I mean, it's a perfect um, suggestion. I actually didn't tell Fashion Coder what the topic was, but this is perfect. Like it, it fits with uh, the yeah. goal of your channel. It's great. Definitely. It's, if it aligns perfectly, I think too. Um, you know, I never believe in coincidences, only synchronicities. And if there is a need for it and I have the tools, then I want to share them with my, I want to share those tools so that um, that other person on the other side can feel empowered for themselves and not rely on me. Because at the end of the day, Viber Finance is a business. However, I'm not in the business of making money off of people. I'm just mm -hmm. I'm compensating my time. And mm -hmm. so... Yeah you to have that empowerment to know the fundamentals you're not wasting your time and wasting your precious hard-earned resources on information that if you take it step by step it's digestible and you can keep going through it yourself and then when you're mm -hmm. ready to progress into like degen defi nfts then you call me mm -hmm. and then i'll walk through it that's cool that's that's very cool and that's just vibrafinance.com right that i forgot to look up <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Cool. Very good. All right. Well, let's. So again, I uh, spru before you got here, I'd asked Lindsay if she had ever done fantasy football. So for everybody watching, again, this whole snake draft thing is a way to do education and crypto, and sometimes even pop culture, whatever we're interested in at the, that week, but in a fun, entertaining way. So. We are going to come up with an order and every round it'll no. reverse. It will go one through three and then three through one and then one through three, then three through one. And that way everybody ends up having the exact same odds of nobody gets an advantage. So um, how about this, Lindsay? What would you like the first, second or third pick? We'll give you the, the choice. Um, I'll go for the second pick. Hmm. Okay. Okay. There we go. We've right. never had anybody pick that. And yeah. Sprue, what, what do you want? First or third? 
I'll go third. I've no, I don't think I've ever went last. Everyone last. Yeah, most of the time. Yeah. I think I we have we didn't make a backwards time. Oreo this time. Every <laughs> single time we've been making reverse Oreos, and this is the first time. I, I keep giving people the, the pick, and they'll either pick first or third, and yep. then Screwball always jumps in to take the middle so he can give right his backwards middle. Oreo line. <laughs> <laughs> the only one that can get away with that here. All right. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so tips and tricks. So let me pull myself up and pull this up here. Now, tips and tricks. So, for the first pick overall for the 10th snake draft or dot BS curve number 10, tips and tricks, tips and tricks in, ooh, tips and tricks in crypto. <laughs> um, I want to focus on something very basic. I think I don't care it, what you pick. I don't care if it's nomics. I don't care if it's coin gecko. I don't care if it's CMZ. I think people focus on, I need to know the charts. I need to know everything about the charts. I think you need to know everything about that first line. When you go and you see Bitcoin and you need to know what each item or category means. So when you go to CMC or coin market cap, the tip and trick is to immerse yourself into understanding what the supply means, what liquid supply means, what capped or locked supply means, and then ultimately what market cap means. And if you can understand those things and utilize that site, not, not to be a resource or shortcut on what you should or shouldn't get involved with, because that's what people do. And that's not what I'm saying. Utilize um, Nomics, CoinGecko, or CoinMarketCap. One of these, uh, people call them coin ranking sites. But utilize this as a way of trying to spot things that stand out. Things that are odd or don't add up. And so my number one pick overall is immersing yourself in understanding the stats on a coin ranking site. So what are you guys' thoughts on that? You can go ahead, Lindsay. What do you think? I was going to say, understanding the tokenomics is, is absolutely important. And it's also important not to get overwhelmed and try to, um, if you're, if you're just entering this space, don't, don't think you have to know how to do TA. It's okay if you don't know how to do TA. If you can look at a chart and go through the basics of like you just said, if you can if you can just hone in on those few things and get really good at those few things, then you can then you can start exploring more. But at first you just know how to read that line and you just need to know where the parameters of your risk tolerance fall in between. So then you can make your own decision from there. And you're not, you know. Yeah, I like it. It's very hard to talk to everyone because you're talking to people like, you know, maybe Richard Hart's watching. Uh, maybe, you know, again, Lindsay, I would put you in that category. People that just, they've been in the game for so long, they're educating people. And so they still have to learn about what's going on. Like the latest, I mean, you hear, you hear headlines about coins or even what's going on with like, the banks right now and then you dive in and do a little bit of research and you realize there's so much more than meets the eye and so that's the way it is with understanding crypto it's like there's different levels and so just being able to understand what the actual uh metrics or coinomics is or uh, tokenomics sorry um as as you said Lindsay, it's so important to be able to understand just the base to be able to break down so that you know if 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 you understand what you're talking about and can spot whether or not what someone's saying makes sense. But, uh, Spruf thoughts. Uh, yeah, man. I think that I use deck screener and trading view. So nomics, I don't know why I used to use nomics. I don't know why I stopped using it. I just got more deck screener and trading view for me. Very important. Took me a while to learn TA analysis. I just watched YouTubers to be honest, even though we stress not to watch YouTubers for your source of information, but, um, that was the research that I did. And then I learned and then I went and read a little bit and I'm like, oh, OK, I understand the same thing with uh, I guess I want to don't want to tip a pick. But another thing about earning fees, 
There's another thing about earning fees that I watch YouTubers and then read a little bit. And I was like, oh, now it's like a ding moment. It always kind of, uh, well, I guess an, uh, an aha moment where um, it kind of just clicks. You, you just have to dive in deep um, and try to understand and you'll get it. It's not, it's not super duper hard stuff to really understand. It's just like Lindsay said, you have to sacrifice your time to be able to understand this stuff. Um, and, and understanding the trends, RSIs, understanding moving averages, um, you, bearish crosses, bullish crosses, all that stuff. All of that stuff is very important to understand to see where the market is going. Um, and yeah, man, it's top tier, top tier, top three most important things to um, use. If you're not using a price chart, because there was a time where there were no price charts. Um, 2017, there were no price charts. So the fact that you have this... <clears throat> This resource, if you're not using it, is kind of like, why are you in crypto? Yeah. Let, let me ask you, I want to get to a different point, Spruv, because I want to think about this differently. If somebody came to me and said, I'm going to take the advice of Spruv and land to where Spruv is from a knowledge basis, like I'll have all the intelligence that he has within a year and I'm going to follow his advice, I would say, do it. Mm -hmm. I would just hope that they had certain things in line, like they would know, Hey, I need to make sure that I have portfolio management, uh, that I'm being mm -hmm. smart with, you know, the basic stuff about making sure that they're being uh, responsible with their money. I want to get to a point where people just get all the info that we have, get the resources and then they decide. So if you, if you don't mind me asking you and kind of contesting I actually think YouTube is one of the greatest places to learn about crypto because it's not in college. And what is one person you used to educate yourself on YouTube in regards to TA? Uh, Trevon, one hundred percent in his early days. Trevon in his early days, he's not really big on TA analysis, but he used to break it down like to a T. Um, watching the three-hour streams from Richard Hart. Um, and then it's this, it's this other guy named Crypto Teacher. He's more of like along the news, not necessarily Crypto TA, but he is like a super mainstream guy that I'm able to like watch and like undegen. That's like my undegening process of watching him. He's like USDC, XRP and stuff like that. Like I like to at least know what's going on in those worlds, even if <clears throat> I'm not like, even though I've not like bought anything, I like to at least know what's going on. I like that. Uh, again, I would say, and this is nothing, let me be very clear. This is nothing against Trevon right now, yeah. but I would say the same thing about Richard Hart. I love Richard Hart, especially with his heel turn or sorry, with his turn away from being the heel <laughs> uh, yeah. recently, like what he's doing on, on Twitter. Selfishly, it just fits in more with like how I operate. But I want Richard to do whatever Richard wants. I want everybody to have max freedom, do whatever they want, even if I disagree with it. But in terms of education, Trevon in 2020 was, I, I think, I think now he's more fun. He's more, you, he's yeah. more of a hangout. And I think that has its place too. But uh, I really like that. So crypto teacher, RH and Trevon. And I would say those last two. Just dive into everything 2020 to 2021. Yeah. And you're if you learn everything that they talk about, first off, good luck. But if you do, you'll you you will be <laughs> in a great spot. So yeah. very good. Well, that's thank you for uh for giving those. I want to do more of that. Like where okay, what do you know about this topic? And then where did you learn it from? So yeah, um, awesome. All right, let's go to the second pick. Overall, we'll go to you, Lindsay. Go ahead. Um, all right. How about don't use MetaMask? Use and you'll save 0.75%. So can you say that one more time? My bad. Don't use MetaMask, use Uniswap and you'll save 0.75%. A little tap. That's a that didn't take 30 seconds to explain. That's pretty <laughs> self-explanatory. <laughs> I like, you know, I like to keep it simple. I like to get yeah. super, super simple. It's just, if, and these are, and you know, if, and if you are in matter, matter, matter you, know, you can adjust the way in there. And yeah. um, Lindsay, what do you think about the potential MetaMask airdrop? Is that something that you be, you think that would be interesting to, and 
uh, telling people maybe if you use MetaMask, you might get an airdrop of the token if and when it drops. Mm, I think that airdrops are always an, an, an interesting incentive to participate in the network. And mm. it depends on um, your it depends on your tolerance, your risk, I guess. And what's your risk? Your risk to privacy, your risk to security. Mm -hmm. like, it depends on your risk, I guess I would say. Yeah, I think that's a great pick. That's definitely a great pick. I definitely use Uniswap over MetaMask. I try I try to every now and again just do the MetaMask thing just to, you know. And I like the new portfolio aspect of MetaMask. That's one thing that Uniswap could definitely, like, snatch from MetaMask and do their own thing. Um, but that that would definitely be, be great. 0.75%. Saving 0.75% is quite a lot also. Yeah, uh, just uh, just for clarification, the ticker says seven point five percent. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. I, yeah, it's not it's not that much. It's just a little bit under a percent. I messed that up. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. But yeah, um, that's the thing. Everybody, everybody goes on this journey. They start utilizing centralized exchanges. Then they kind of find out. Oh, I've got to like get away from this and hold my own keys. You know, everybody using Robin Hood, uh, like they realize, wait, I don't actually hold Bitcoin. I hold a piece of paper and they hold the Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so it's like they go from that to, OK, I need to hold it myself. And then they're like, OK, now that I'm holding it myself and I'm utilizing, you know, whatever type of wallet, but I'm utilizing MetaMask to, um, to, uh, trans to transact basically. Uh, then you learn that there's a better way. And again, if you do, if you do a hundred transactions, you're now starting to realize that like, Oh, you're leaving significant amount of money on the table and, uh, Uniswap, it, there's so many other great things that if you get people to move one step over, like, Hey, you're going to save this, you know, almost a percent, you're going to save money, significant money over time. But then guess what? Uniswap has that MetaMask doesn't. It has these other features that allow you to maybe gain more yield. And I won't tip any picks, but mm -hmm. there's some other great benefits to moving people over to a Uniswap in my mm -hmm. opinion as well. So, all right. Sproof. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Say, it'll be interesting to see how they move forward with their mobile application because they're getting shut down every set every way. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how they move forward with that because you, for mass adoption, you really need ease, easy use. That's that's mm -hmm. why we're, the problem we had, like you just said with Bitcoin. You know, if people are trusting changes the custody of their crypto because they're so used to centralizing. Centralized institutions custodying their cash. You know, mm -hmm. it's not your cash until it's in your hand, right? So it's not your crypto yeah. until it's in your hands, too. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll get yeah. to that on the other track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, it's all great in theory, but um, this is one thing that Jack Levin has said. He's like, it's awesome, it's all great, but it doesn't mean anything until you are able to buy milk with your crypto gains, like exactly. until. It is actually buying you things that help you to support your family. It's all great theory, but we need to make sure we can put these things into practice. And I would say I totally agree. And, uh, um, but yeah, some people very, are here very, now. Some people are, like me, for instance, I buy like gas and stuff on Coinbase and get like 4%, 1%, Bitcoin, 4% and XLM. I, I use crypto like now to in real life. So. Yeah, and I, I think that's good. It's just how much of these threats recently are are like just veiled threats and how much are real? Like, because mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if the report is true. I've been trying to verify it, but apparently Coinbase uh, moved a good, a substantial amount of their accounts to Silvergate three days before the whole debacle occurred. So mm. it makes me wonder, uh, I'm trying to confirm that, that that was like a leak, but I don't know. Have you heard that at all, Lindsay? If about... you read it on Coindesk, Coin, Coin Telegraph, or any of those kind of sites, and it was not a leak, it was planted. <laughs> like that's mm. those are strategically put there in place so that you're seeing those headlines, you're gasping with, you know, it's a, it's a look over there kind of situation. Mm -hmm. 
I thought maybe we're doing with DeFi, like media, mass, but I, and I call, I consider that mainstream media for now because those are the, the, those are the bigger ones covering many crypto, but you'll see the same narrative throughout. And it's perhaps because one of those companies owns the publication. So um, they're they make a mistake about it. They are only letting you read what they want you to. And that yes. goes to yeah. every media source, except for yeah. YouTube. You know, I do find YouTube to be a valuable source because you can hear uh, one of the TA guys I, I learned from and like to watch is Benjamin Cohen. And he speaks about Bitcoin and he um, walks you through the TA very differently than other people do. But being able to take, you know, and listen to him and then listen to four or five others. And then I can I can bits and piece that myself together. That's crazy that you said that. That just gives me that just gave me the idea that YouTube is truly a decentralized news platform. That's crazy. If you really um, think about it. It's decentralized because it's the people's net news. Well, when we start seeing new applications for social media coming, um, you know, YouTube is partnered and YouTube is very, very censored. If you have, if you ever have a question about how censored mm -hmm. it is, say a couple things that are, that fall within the lines of mm -hmm. violating community standards and our channel, we had over a thousand subscribers, little things are popping the next day. Bam, they yanked my they yanked my personal email. I had years gone because it was associated with my YouTube account. All subscribers gone, done, done. So until we can see, until we can actually have freedom of speech, sure. I don't know. I'm waiting for but you're right though. I do see I do see what you're saying. Like it is yeah. hard now, it is like Twitter honestly yeah. I feel like is the most uh truth speaking platform that we have available. But yeah, I guess, yeah, it's not, it's not truly decentralized. It's more of the people's news platform instead of news no. agencies controlling what we see. Yeah, we're no. not running the script here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, I think I totally agree with both of you. I see. So, Sproof, yeah, I could say whatever I want, but they're going, there's still this filter and funnel where at mm -hmm. the top, they're going to decide like, oh, you said, uh, uh, Lindsay, I heard what you said earlier and I can't remember what you said, but at first I was like, wait, what, what was she saying? She said something 18. And then I realized, oh, she's oh, trying to avoid saying this, you know, the no, whole, the cough. What, what, yeah. what'd you call it? When Charlie turned 19, he had a terrible cough. <laughs> I never heard that. Have you heard that before, Sproof? Mm -mm. I love that. That's just a little code. Yeah. Charlie turned 19, got a terrible cough. Yeah. It was a terrible cough too. It caused a <laughs> lot of problems. Yeah, but, a lot of expensive medicine too. Yeah. yeah, and like if you or I or Lindsay said what Joe Rogan said. By the way, Joe Rogan had a lot of problems. You know, he was just saying like I went to the doctor and you know there's off label uses for these medicines and uh, yeah, I was like let's throw everything at it. I really want to conquer this. That's a pretty normal thing and not that's not a scandalous thing to say but it took away from the the overlords the people that control these companies it took away from the people that are really paying them. it's not mm -hmm. you or I, I mean they they need us to create the content but they're really getting paid by the advertisers the pfizers the you know the big mm -hmm. companies and so i absolutely get what you're saying i i feel terrible so everybody go go subscribe to viber finance was that your channel Hexagon Lindsay, or was that Vibra Finance? That's, I know they're both yours, but yeah, it's both of ours. Um, you get awesome alpha with Adam Monday through Friday, and then sometimes I sneak on camera and do a video or two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everybody, please go go subscribe. Um, we need to, these are the number one, like I've never said this before. This is probably the number one most important time for everybody to actually go subscribe because there we need people that have done all the work to build up like i've worked pretty hard and i have like 200 subscribers and mm -hmm. it takes so much work so to to get monetized and then to have that just rug pulled <laughs> mm -hmm. um is just awful so yeah everybody please go subscribe to uh hexagon Lindsay with a d and then um and then vibra finance so very good well let's uh let's go to our third pick Sproove, you are up with the third pick overall. All right. So um, what I feel like is the one of the most important things that I integrate into um, my tips and tricks 
is dollar cost averaging or daily cost averaging, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, I would consider dollar cost averaging um, as being uh, I feel like dollar cost averaging is more of looking at the charts and trying to find a value to buy it versus daily cost averaging is what I do is I just buy it no matter what the price is at any at a certain time throughout throughout the day. Um, with anything, anything that I go in, I never really ape in anymore. I kind of got away from that, um, especially because I believe that nothing um, and and I believe this back then in 2017, 2018, when I first started. But even more now, never putting anything into crypto that I do not want to lose is what I stress to my subscribers. And um, the DCA rule is one thing that you can do. Put a certain you know how much money. Well, you should know how much money you're going to have on your paycheck. Take a certain amount that you don't care about, whether it be 6%. I, I typically do less than 6% um, of my income and put it into crypto, dollar cost averaging. Good. I like that. Um, what, what are your thoughts? Because I I think it's always great advice. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with DCA. You'll hear, again, these people will conflate these conversations. So we almost need to figure out like who's our audience. And that's the hard thing with a video like this, but mm -hmm. with the tips and tricks, when we're talking to the masses, starting from like your, your crypto journey, starting with DCA, that's great. That's going to mm -hmm. avoid the, most people start, you know, with more of a DGEN, little bit of gambling, a little bit of uh, mm -hmm. diving into a meme coin. You know, I spent, my whole paycheck on it, almost treating it like a casino. And, um, it, and so if you start from that point, I think then you can get to videos where Richard Hart says, no, don't DCA. But really what he's saying is he's saying th the problem with dollar cost averaging is the same problem that is with um, spreading out amongst 20 different things. It's really hard to actually get a 20 X. It's not as hard in crypto, but if you spread it amongst 20 different things, just in the name of trying to diversify, that can become a problem. So I think understanding where you're at is really important at the beginning. I, by the way, I th I'm not just saying dollar cost averaging is important at the beginning of your journey. I think it's a good idea always, but I do hear people come out against it sometimes. And I wonder like, why, who are you talking to exactly? Because I think this is good advice for everybody because it's so hard to find the bottom. And so mm -hmm. if you can, if you dollar cost average, that gives you a better chance at on average getting in at a decent, at a decent amount or level. What, what are your thoughts? Lindsay? Yeah, absolutely. You have to have a plan. And when you have a plan in place and you know your what and your why, it is so much easier to ignore FUD. It is so much easier to ignore the outside noise that distracts you. And it also stops you from making emotional decisions with your capital. You're coming from a place of a plan when you're, whether your dollar cost averaging daily, whether your dollar cost averaging weekly, that is your plan and you're, and you're sticking to it. And, you know, diversification across assets is important, but having a plan is the most important thing too. Then you know what you can stick to and you know what your boundaries are. And then if you have some wiggle room with a plan, you can move into things. Yeah. No? Yeah. I, I like that a lot. The the plan mm -hmm. is the most important thing. Cause if you have a plan, then like I, I have said, I'm going to do $400 in a hex every month. And, mm -hmm. and so that's kind of my plan. Yeah. That's DCA technically. Um, but it's not all that I'm doing and some months it's been more, but, more. I, but I made a commitment, um, right when may hit, because I was like, this is going to, when may ended up not being the launch of pulse chain, I was like, I don't want to even, I, I realized it would do weird things to the price and it probably would send the price down and oh boy, did it, but the whole market went down and so I, I realized I wasn't going to try to play that game because I, I was going to say people shouldn't play that game. Don't try to time, do DCA more than try to time the bottom because when you miss it, it's brutal. It's very, exactly. it's very hard to see this thing. You'd be right about it, but you missed it because you were waiting for a better price. We had Brizology on. He, he admitted, listen, 
I bought at eight and then it went down to four. I bought it four yeah. and then it went down to two. And I was like, I'm not getting caught again. I know it's going down yeah. to one. And it didn't. It hit 1.8 it, and it shot up to, you know, wherever it's at now, eight, eight or whatever yep. it is. If you set a plan, so like kind of how you said you put four hundred dollars in, instead of putting a whole four hundred dollars in and potentially buying a top, you can just do thirteen dollars a day. Every single day, you buy thirteen dollars worth of hex a day, and that's your four hundred for the month. And you're catching, if it's a falling knife at the time, you're catching a falling knife, and then as soon as it shot up, then you could have realized at least some gains instead of just be holding on to holding on to something that's just going down and then went up fifty percent. You're still down fifty percent. It's like I believe it kind of saves it kind of saves you um, if you just set up a different plan because dollar cost or DCN can be different for everybody. You can set up a, a year where I want to put in a want to put in a million dollars. You could just set a goal. You have to set a goal, I feel like. And that's what it's stemming from. I, I, I like that a lot. It's tax time, too. So what I tell everybody, I tell people two things. Just again, uh, uh, maybe I maybe this is tip picking or. Yeah, I'll actually wait. I'll wait. But anyway, let's go on to the fourth pick. Um, fourth pick overall to Spruve. So we're wrapping around. Spruve had the third pick, and then he gets the fourth overall pick, first to the second round. Julio. All righty. So uh, this one's going to be a good one. Um, I would say practicing safe sex, C-E-X. So we're going to centralize exchange condoms, make, making sure that you're um, – on ramping and off ramping pretty swiftly. Don't hold too much of your tokens on a um, in a wallet that you don't own. Uh, so that's just, and that's that's major key. You got to make sure you practice safe sex, kids. Uh, yeah, very good. All right. <laughs> oh dang it! It erased it. Mm hmm. Oh, uh, anyways. All right. Thoughts. So Lindsay, <laughs> he, he put it in a very funny <laughs> way, but I mean, get your keys off of centralized exchanges. Put it in another way. You would treat it like a public toilet. Get in, do your business, wash your hands, <laughs> wash your hands, and then get a, keep, your, keep your crypto on a cold storage wallet. Custody it yourself. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, like that's the same. That's the saying that I like custody your coins. And uh, it, at the end of the day, if you do that, you'll hear people about how they've lost their money and they've lost or they got hacked. You are 98%. So it was, is that right? One in four, one, one in 50. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You're 98% more likely to lose money or 50 times more likely on a centralized exchange because they just hit everybody when it, when it's a big, huge centralized exchange problem, it hits everybody. And so mm. then, you know, talking to people back in, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was 2014 beginning of 2014 when we had the Mount Gox problem, I believe. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm, but regardless, it's a decade ago, and now we're still talking about maybe they'll get their money. And, mm -hmm. you know, that that takes government intervention. And, and even that worries me because it's like, well, are, are they helping people get their money back? Or is this, you know, a tool to try to advertise that crypto is a problem, which it's it's not. It's again, Spruve and I talk about this all the time, Lindsay, but we need two different names. We need a name for SBF, FTT token, FTX, all of that, whatever that is called, and then crypto. Yeah, yeah. it's called crypto. Crypto. <laughs> I like yeah. that. I like that. A lot. Okay, well, we got it. That's our term now. From now on, yeah, uh, crypto. We just need. Well, to, I didn't know what crypto is before it becomes crypto because FTX wasn't crypto before it was. It was crypto before it was crypto. Oh. I disagree, Spruve. I think if yeah. I brought it to you and we said, let's put it through the filter of like you and we, we like Jack Levin. We think he's very, very smart. He would yeah. call it the first principles of crypto. And yeah, we, we would automatically first test is do you get to keep your own coins? Like, our, yeah. our, and, and you yeah, had to lock them up. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that whole thing had so many problems and I was just doing a video. I did a spoof video where Joe Rogan was interviewing uh, uh, Richard Hart and uh, I found all these cool videos of 
him talking in 2020 about getting your coins off of Celsius, getting your coins off of FTX. That that mm-hmm. one was from like 2021, but it was two years ago. And so mm-hmm. it it's really, uh, I think it would have, would have been obvious, but you're right. It is difficult. And so that's why we're doing this episode. It's like, sometimes it's easy for somebody who's been in to crypto for a while, but those who haven't, you need some some uh, tips and tricks to help you identify what is crypto and what is crypto. I love that. Good job. <laughs> and congrats to your 400 views on that Joe Rogan uh, video too. Thanks. You know, you, you know what? I I actually had fun. I'm having more fun learning how to like become a video editor than mm-hmm. I than. Well, I'm having more fun with crypto, but the point is, yeah. like, I'm surprised that I like video editing. Like, yeah okay don't i hate it but yeah <laughs> well if i can ever if i can ever help you with the video let me know um yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I'm getting there but okay, okay. we are now, we are now on, on. so yeah practice safe cex there we go all right so we are now on to the fifth pick overall that is up to you Lindsay. go ahead <laughs> Boxes are an awesome way for you to start interacting with the decks. They're an awesome way for you to forge relationships with crypto communities. And it's a really great way for you to start understanding their economic or their tokenomics rather. So you can go to Sauce, you can go to yeah, Sun, you can Pulse when it launches. I mean, there will be there are many or Sweet Testnet also has a fun it now too. You can get on there and play, start working with the Sweet Testnet. It's Free money and it's really nice and you never know where those are going to take you or the faucets are going to take you the faucets that i've been able to participate in um have moved things along and helped more house. you never know what's up okay so i've utilized it a little bit with pulse chain but my journey in crypto has been a little unique where it's been very much like I kind of, I liked ETH and that was it. And then I liked Richard and that was it. And then it was just Hex. And so it's been like kind of Hex community centric. But in terms of faucets, there obviously has been one for Pulse Chain. Um, And you get to play around on the test that. And I think that is really one of the most important things. These give you coins, test that coins, which allow you um, to practice. And so I wanted to ask, are there anything else that maybe I am not as experienced with when it comes to faucets that you would want to mention? Um, or is it mainly that it gives you practice? Uh, is there anything else? I mean, mainly it gives you practice and these tokens, you can, you can, some of them are some of them, like the pulse is practice without promise, right? And um, some of these are practice without promise, but they you could utilize them and turn them like sauce, for example. So you can sauce, there's XWA sauce, you, you can take it into so hashtag. I mean there's so many different platforms where you can go get sauce or swap, take your sauce that you're pulling from the faucet and then turn it into H bar. You can stake your H bar. Like there's just so many good game plays off of mm-hmm like a free faucet that are coming in and then you can turn around and collect those and stake them. And I mean, it's just, just it never, you know, like that sauce is one course X one um, in the zone wallet or XRPL. That is, it's like you get two course tokens every day, every 24 hours you pull it and then you can you just your feet. You're going to exchange, you can swap them for solo, get an airdrop, your airdrop, you can swap them for some core, get an airdrop very much but um, it's something and it gives you a mm-hmm. start and why not it's free it's free you know yeah that's crazy i love it i love um you're a real dj and that's crazy i'm just not seeing because you said sweet wallet too i'm like dang she, she's into the sweet i've never heard of sauce i've heard of h bar but i've seen sauce but you're like deep deep yeah. into the trenches of that's crypto. that's proves way of saying that 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 you're like a veteran <laughs> I, yeah. you know, honestly, it is Richard Hart ecosystem without a doubt it is the absolute course of one of the course of the best people behind me, and I love everything that's coming down it. I've been face to face with the community and the developers to some of these projects and products, and not you know. And so for me, I like I 
know what I have. I know what I hold. And then I also have a plan and I stick to that and I don't over leverage myself. So if I have the opportunity to go in and I have to credit that to Adam, our CEO here at Fiber Finance. He is the man that got me started in with crypto because his energy and his, um, I mean, really like the way you see the bigger picture, it's infectious and he finds all those hidden, he finds all those hidden gems that look like they could be serious DJ poops, but they're not like they're, yeah. they're like he finds really good stuff. He is one of those that I think their wallet is amazing. I think I love how their wallet has the NFTs in it, has their has dApps in the wallet. It's crazy. I love Sweet. Yeah, it's I mean, honestly, that what an awesome and clean user face. Mm -hmm. And if you're on the you can go into the DevNet. They have a Discord. You go into the Discord and you pull, you could pull that faucet every 30 minutes and it gives mm -hmm. you DevNet tokens. Now there's no promise. Yeah. That would be a reward for end of it. But as you go along and you're if you're playing along with these, I can see all of the cappies that I've minted so mm -hmm. far that on their playing there that much higher. Yeah. They and they don't they every single token or every single network says we're not gonna do an art air, air job. Arbitrum said it and they just announced their airdrop today. Like, come on. Yeah, not and you weren't paying attention to the and they do, they give you little tasks. To open up, they'll say it right in there or wherever they're communicating. I'm specifically speaking about today right now. In their Discord, they will say, "Go here, open up wallet. This is your new tab." So you know what to follow, and you know where to kind of play around. So they have a lot of really cool things. Cool, yeah. Very good. I, I like that. That's, that's some uh, good advice there. And I think when um, I'm going to pull myself up here for the sixth pick or final pick of the second round. I think when I think of tips, tricks, it's about getting more of what you want, which is you want these coins that you think have a lot of value. But then when you get a lot of them, you realize, wow, the bank did something that I didn't realize and it's quite valuable and that is provide security so tips and tricks from the very beginning if somebody had a thousand dollars now some people may disagree with this but i would spend a fifth of that i would spend two hundred dollars of their thousand and getting them set up from a security standpoint i would get them a trezor probably a trezor one um i may even get them two um, there's different treasures, there's ledgers, there's other, um, that they, they have, uh, they, there's a whole bunch out there, but those are the two type of wallets that are the most famous. And I have a couple here. Um, I, I should probably grab one and show it, but, uh, my pick is understanding and not, not just understanding, but going out and getting yourself a cold wallet. So you, when something bad happens, it's going to be too late. And so the security is something that you need to do. It's one of those things you need to do it, even though you think you don't need to, or it's a pain. It just needs to be done. And if you do it the first thing, then it'll be, it'll always be something that you interact with. So I would say cold wallets not only need to be understood, they need to be a part of your crypto journey or just a part of how you secure your funds from the get go. So I'm just going to put cold wallets there. And what are you guys' thoughts on Trezor? Do you have a preference? Do you use them? What are your thoughts, Lindsay? Um, I love my Ledger Nano X. I love it. I love it so much that I bought an extra one. And once I reach 1,000 subscribers on Viber Finance live stream on our YouTube channel, I will be giving one directly from the manufacturer, purchased directly from the manufacturer, never a third party. That's really important to note, too. When you're purchasing yes. your, your ledger, but you're only purchasing it from the manufacturer. Don't go to Amazon. This is not the time to shop Amazon. Go think think peer to peer, think business to business. Go straight to the source on this one. If mm -hmm. it passes through the hands of Amazon, what are you doing? You're passing it through the hands of a middleman. And what can mm -hmm. happen? Things get unwrapped, things get sealed. It's not that hard to throw a shrink. I can do this, but I'm just saying it's not that hard to throw like a shrink wrap on something and make it look brand new. Mm -hmm. Easy. I know I know a guy who uh, bought a, a Trezor one and he bought it off of Amazon and then he realized uh, that he did a really stupid thing and he wasted 150 bucks. 
<laughs> this is me. I was so mad at myself because I realized it after the 30 days where I could have returned it. And I was like, yeah. you like it's 150 bucks, which is a lot and not a lot, right? It's yeah, like but it's a waste a waste that it is a lot. To waste 150. To waste it is a lot, but I'm like, yeah. why did I buy one? Chris meal. For yeah, <laughs> yeah. I could have I could have gave Spruve a really nice steak dinner. Come on. But it was like I, I can't justify. Like I made the mistake and I recognized it too late to return it, but I can't justify. It. Like I'm doing this because I'm securing a lot of money, right? <laughs> and so I like, okay. I just, I've got to eat it and move forward. And so I bought it from the manufacturer. So I should have led with that. So thank mm. you, Lindsay. That's, that is the most important thing. Do not buy them, even if they're cheaper, especially if they're cheaper, actually. Yeah. If they're cheaper, that means there's a reason. And I would have all, if I was a scumbag, I'd have all the incentive in the world to eat a little bit of slippage or, or to lose a little bit of money on the front end to be able to get you to utilize this wallet that I have tampered with. And so, um, yeah, ma make sure that you get it from the manufacturer. So very cool, by the way, stay tuned to, uh, Vibra finance because you might have a chance to get a ledger mm -hmm. nano X because they're halfway there. You, they're almost at 500. And, how yeah. many you got 500 and something? I don't know, 30 this morning. I was like, <laughs> nice. Very good. Okay. Um, very good. So this one, I, I am going to, uh, I'm going to bring myself up here. Oh, that's the wrong one. And uh, I am going to bring myself up for the back-to-back, -back, the seventh pick overall. Tax time. It is tax time. Everybody does their taxes, and a vast majority of Americans get checks back. And they don't really know what they're going to get back. They might have an idea, but they don't really know until they go through and they, they process their H&R block or they go to their accountant. And I think if the accountant on the other side of the desk told you, oh, you're going to get 8,700. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm dyslexic. It was 7,800. There's nothing you would do. You would just say, okay. And so the advice is whatever number you hear, tell yourself no matter how bad you need it, because the, the problem is you're always going to need it, especially with how things are. But if you just didn't have it, you would find a way to survive. So take 10%. So I'm, I'm not trying to kill you or, or say take, you know, 50% of it or 90%, take 10% and begin to just go through the process of getting it on it into your hands but in the form of crypto. And if you do that every year, you're going to be dollar cost averaging on a yearly basis. And it's going to be not a specific amount, but it will be 10%. And every year you'll be investing and just, just man monitor it, manage it, but don't pull it up. Just keep it in for a rainy day. Keep it in for retirement. Utilize crypto through your tax return on an annual basis as your own managed 401k. So um, I got to figure out how to word that, but what are your guys' general thoughts on that? Um, I would say that's a good idea because we talked about this a couple, I don't know if we talked about this a couple video videos ago or the last video, but um, when it comes time for me to retire and pension is wearing thin, social security is wearing thin, because it's kind of a backward system. It's not sustainable at all, which is crazy to say, because it's the government that's doing it. Um, and that's why they want control, because they want to be able to control how much money we're getting. Um, said, and, and, and I would think like retirement annuities, like I'm all in on, uh, I've learned a lot about life insurance and what, what it's all about. Um, this is kind of like a, what it, what it would, it's a variable universal life policy. So it's basically an amount that you're, it's like a life insurance policy, but it's connected to the stock market. In, in life insurance, they connect it to um, the S&P 500, which is actually like the S&P 7, because usually the top seven uh, determines the entire market. But, um, and they usually say that crypto and the stock market are directly related, but I think that's becoming less and less now. Um, 
were because a lot of people, a lot of uh, what millennials, I guess millennials are. Um, it said about forty percent of millennials are more in uh, more interested in investing into crypto rather than um, the stocks. So yeah, it's a great pick. I think that it's our only way of of securing our future. I think that the government is going to fail us. They are currently right now. I feel like um, no shade to them, but if they if they do get better, I'll still have my crypto, and I'm still interested in the things that they have to offer as far as life insurance go. Life insurance policies are great, so definitely uh, need one. I would love a world where your dollar became vastly more valuable, and people were having raises twice as high as the annual inflation rate and crypto suffered for that i would i would exchange that because the vast number of people that would um would feel less pain would would be a lot higher but that's not going to happen like just look at what happened this week with the bank bailouts the bank bailouts are because some very very wealthy powerful people felt pain and so mm -hmm. they're the guys who have the ears of the politicians and the people who are regulators and so yeah i i hope and uh yeah we're all pulling for the government to do the very best and same thing with the sec but then we see silly things like targeting hex streamers like mm -hmm. it couldn't be a more silly thing to do but mm -hmm. that that's the world we live in so i think a a world that goes crazy crypto is a good hedge it's just one thing Lindsay said earlier that really stuck with me is you've got to remember that like the coin coin desk coin telegraph like a lot of these just need to be in your mind as a part of the just broader media system like the the i wouldn't look at cnn telling me something about crypto and take it as fact i would do additional research it might you know spur some thoughts and and make me wonder but um we need to make sure we do the same thing with uh with all these sites so yeah guys take your take your destiny in your own hands and that starts with your money and when you get money back pretend like you got 10 percent less and then put that money to your future as maddie allen says pay your future self such a great thing pay your future self from your taxes so uh, very good we are at the eighth pick Overall, and so we're back. Did you on... have any comments on the ten percent? I don't think you did. You say something? Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Honestly, I think I think the ten percent is great. If you could be more generous with yourself every time they turn on that money, every time they turn on that money printer, which will happen again. And I don't necessarily have a crystal, but I have a pretty good idea of uh, the narratives that are used to build fear into the crowd. We'll just say, and so inevitably there will be something else that is a look over here of it and when they do that money printer goes on because that seems to soothe all wounds or whatever and so every time they turn that on if you took 10 percent, if you're comfortable with that right mm -hmm. think about what you would do with the other percent if it, that never came in the first place so if you never got that return back if you didn't get that money printer or you know that little chill that we got or your cell there if you didn't receive the money at all, would you be off? Anymore? And um, for me, it was like, it was like a no brainer when the money printer went on. I was like, okay, how can I turn this into an asset that will appreciate the value and not, um, ooh, when land, not that there was land money, but you know what I'm saying? Because we will get to that place with the skins and pulse skins. We will get to that when Lambo place. So to be able to hone in on that and think, like, okay, you know, someday the someday that ten percent will mean nothing to me because I will have mm -hmm. much more than that. But that's where mm -hmm. we're having a plan comes in. Yeah, I like that. And um, what was I gonna say? Darn it! Never mind. Let's keep keep it moving. Sorry. Keep moving that's good. That's good. Um, but yeah, I I I will put a pin in this and say that is uh one thing I do like that you said, Lindsay. That I want to add set your minimum it's like working out people say uh i'm gonna work out five times a week okay but what are you what are you not going to like let like it's are you gonna do two times a week and you know the end of your week is saturday night and it's friday night and like you can't go out with your friends like are you gonna be that dedicated what is the mm -hmm. minimum you are going to allow yourself to do and then 
set a, a, a second amount that's going to make you feel really good. Like, hey, I said 10% minimum, but I, I'm going to push it to 25. And then when you do it, I promise you, you will feel good. It's just you're you're going to – we live in a consumerist society where consumerism is everywhere. It's buy this, buy that. And I, I struggle with it every day. And mm-hmm. But the days that I – do better and the, especially the months when i do better when i could see oh wow it jumped up more than it normally does that's when i feel really good and that's that is that is a small that's small in comparison to what can happen if you do exactly like more than 10 percent with your tax refund in putting it into crypto you're gonna have to wait a while mm-hmm. but if you wait a year or two maybe three you'll you'll turn that into a lot more than 10 percent or or more so okay Lindsay, you're up with the eighth pick overall oh, man there's so many, so many guys. but um i was I always look for staking and um in a there are many protocols out there and most of them most cryptos have it but you know look at Look at the token or coin that you hold. Look at the staking opportunities that are available and see if those perhaps fall in line with your, your or align with your goals. I don't know. I think that, I think we don't use that word anymore. Like, kind of, yeah. Uh, know, yeah. Yeah. Set it for yeah, that's definitely. Um, I think that mining and whatnot and all that good stuff is a great tool for financial freedom and a passive income. Um, because if you have a mass amount of money, you can basically live off your staking rewards. Um, of which I uh, I know there's a lot of people who have like mil- uh, just think about a million dollars or even even um for instance, this is what I was gonna say that I lost. Um, Richard Hart's play on buying die. Or just how the U.S. dollar went down uh, uh, to eighty, what nine cents? Think about if we were able to do we, that. Was basically our opportunity to buy U.S. dollar at cheap for cheap, which is crazy. So um, that was a test run. Yeah, it, it, but it, and it, you had to you had to have balls like to do that. So you had to have a lot of like belief to, to think that this thing is going to come back. Um, and it wasn't really hard to see if you kind of dived in, you would know that it would it, it was going to come back because 75 percent of the reserve was in bonds. And then only one out of the five banks collapsed. So there were four other banks that was keeping it up, upheld. So uh, with Richard Hart doing that, that was good. got out of bed on a Sunday. You said what? I said, when the last time the Federal Reserve got out of bed on a Sunday? Exactly. When's the last was time that- Democrats and Republicans got out of bed, got on a Zoom call on a Sunday emergency meeting. They were given 15 minutes notice before they were to appear live, and half of them didn't even receive the invite. So, mm-hmm. if you did your research yeah. on that, you made a, you made a good buck off yep. the buck. <laughs> free money yeah. off the dollar. Yeah, uh, Lindsay, Lindsay, you had said uh, it was a test run. I agree with you, but expand upon what you were saying. Um, well. This is just my this is just my observation. This is total. Yeah. This is all just off the cuff here. But really, right, right. Um, when you're looking at the entities that were moving CBDCs around, or the uh, institutions that were moving them around, and then you're looking at, um, or I'm sorry, they're looking to move CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, around. Mm-hmm. And right now, uh, this trial here with USDC. Let's see. Let's see what we. Let's see what we can do. My thoughts on that. Or let's see what we can do over here again with, you know, you know, Silicon Valley Bank collapsing. Um, no news about it, but the CEO is you know, selling off stock. They're getting thrown off the board in San, San, San Diego or San Francisco. Out there, they're getting thrown off the federal board. And nobody says anything about insider trading. Like, there's no talk about insider trading because there's laws to protect them from putting around that. So when I say like, that was a test run, I think it's just a, let's just see what we can get away with here. Let's just mm-hmm. see how, how much we can fluctuate the situation. And, you know, when you see an arbitrage situation like that, it, for that SAC wallet to have taken that opportunity and really like, what was it, over 3 million? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. 
I mean, that was not the only player that made those moves. So testing indeed to see, but it's like a toddler. Let's see what we get. It's we're early. We, I think sometimes because we've been here even it's mm. been more than an hour that if you started the stream, then you're already like probably getting the crypto bug already. And once you open that Pandora's box to information, there's so much of it out there. Like you just, you have to, sometimes I have to put blinders and be like, don't, don't, don't go crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's, it's such, such good advice. And it makes me so motivated to like Richard Hart 12 years ago, knew nothing about cryptocurrency, like the beginning or, or whatever, 13 years ago. And so you can get there. So you out there, like you, I, Lindsay, we can all get there. It takes the dedication and some of us may not have a memory of like a Richard Hart or a Lindsay. So we may need to read stuff twice we may need to be as twice as invested but one of the things that helps you is staking your funds it allows you to earn yield without you doing anything and especially if you do it in the right protocol you can hold your own keys you're earning 38 percent, whatever the number is it's around there 35 percent in hex but it's in hex coins and so then it's about getting more people to hear about the coin about the protocol and the more people that that get involved well you're going to eventually see that price rise on the token but understanding that everybody can get to the knowledge point of the people that you look up to is very very important i hate hearing like well i'm just not as smart as them the truth is you're probably not as dedicated and it that's that that can be fixed actually there are lots of people myself included like i i was very 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 uh involved with sports and then from 21 to like 28 i just didn't do anything gained 78 pounds but then i turned it back on and so i want to say the same thing with people financially like crypto can be the thing that that flips that like once you get interested in it people myself included get really interested in it and it can change everything it can get you to be more efficient with your taxes utilize your refund better better with your paychecks it can get you to monitor your spending uh crypto can be that 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 switch that that flips kind of your financial world around and for for mm -hmm. the better so um okay we're at Pick number nine, Spruve. You are up. Uh, hmm. Utilizing Telegram daily. So I think that <clears throat> if you're in crypto, um, Telegram is one resource that we've talked about that is very prominent in the space. And um, uh, one thing, if you don't have a lot of time on your hands, because I know a lot of people still work nine to fives. A lot of people have a lot, a lot of other things that they're dealing with in, in the real world. But uh, still going into the Telegram, whether it be the Hex Telegram, the Zen Telegram, my Telegram, the big business Telegram, um, you just popping in there and hitting those pin tweets is essential for people who don't have a lot of time on their hands and are able to just sit in there and chat it up with people for eight hours a day. Now, I don't I don't know too many people that can do that. I personally can't. Um, but being able to go to those pin tweets and at least seeing the announcements in the news so you don't miss important things because sometimes there may be a fork or whatever. Uh, I mean there's been things where you gotta where you gotta transfer your coins over or they're going to a new network. Things may happen and and those pin tweets are the um like the key of importance uh when looking for um new news in crypto very good i love it i've recently said this on one of our snake drafts this is something that i it's been in the last two months that i've started to do i'm now on telegram daily it, it's hard i was uh two years ago i was not a guy that did any like anything with uh social media and then you realize oh well twitter's kind of important and then like oh youtube great resource and you're like well telegram that's really how you do deep dives on these anything that's new you know go go read the white paper go 
check out their telegram. There are these things that are kind of on this checklist to make sure like, does this protocol or coin match with what I want to be involved with, what I want to put my uh, money into? Do they follow the first principles of crypto? Telegram is a good window into what the, the community or the founder is doing with that coin. So Lindsay, what are your thoughts? Did you utilize Telegram? Oh yeah, and definitely, and well said on that one. You you want to go into a Telegram chat that is active with their team. You know, if you can get in there and devs are active, and you can actually ask the ones that are working hands on with the project or product, you have in you have most valuable insight. You have a direct resource to the source. You're not waiting to hear it through uh, filtered news. And by filtered news, I mean um, all of us here on this panel. You know, we could interpret something very differently than somebody reading that firsthand. So. Um, I, I always say, like, I love that you said go to the pinned messages. Like, go to the you don't have to go through and scroll all day because some of these get a little out of control with their yeah. gifts and their memes. And it's just for me, it was like when I first started, I was like, this is too much. I, I, yeah. Why are you here all day? And honestly, yeah. don't want to be in those all day. They are a beautiful, awesome resource. But if you're spending all your day in a telegram, then you're taking time away from something else that needs your attention a little bit more. Just saying. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm telling you what to do. This is a suggestion. Yeah, just the pin messages. And I like, Luke, I like what you said about um, specifically um, the means of the checklist. Like, that's one thing when I'm looking into a coin, I look at their Twitter. How active are they on Twitter? Look in their Telegram. Are people actually, are, are there real people or are there bots? Um, I ask if I have a question, I ask the question. And a dev needs to get back to me at least within 24 hours. Um, and if they're immediate, I'm like, okay, that's that's a green light. They're getting right back to me. Um, so like like how you said, the, the, the checklist, Telegram should be in your checklist before you ever put your money into anything. Absolutely. Yeah. That, like when people say do your own research, that's part of the research. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. When and, and the do your own research has been like co-opted. And I feel like so many people who have scammed people say that. And it's like a way to get out of uh, being culpable for what they're they're doing and they know they're doing. And so, yeah, it's instead of that, it's telegram this like go mm -hmm. check out the pin message by the way moderation in all things and what's great about pin messages is it allows you to sift through all the fun like it's mm -hmm. not necessarily bad but it is it may be a waste of time to you because they're mm -hmm. they're talking to a group of people or someone else and they're having fun and throwing memes around but the pin messages hopefully are the most important stuff. I will say Telegram has helped me with two specific things. Power City, I think Power City is going to be very important and um, unless they mess it up. And I don't think they will, but <laughs> I think it has the ability to be um, really vital for the Pulse Chain community. I think it can actually help. And I, I've never really said this about another coin like, I, I don't know how much Hedron will help Hex. I know all about what Hedron does. I just don't know that – I think – I just don't know how much I believe that. But I do think Power City's whole ecosystem could really be helpful. And I really think I got to that point, that opinion, that belief, in large part because of Telegram. Not because I talked to KDP or LV, but because – of what I learned on telegram. And I will say, I'm actually not going to mention this, um, coin because I did sacrifice for it, but, um, that's not why I'm not going to mention it, but I telegram helped me to realize that I think that coin has some serious problems. And so it's not out yet. There's a sacrifice for it, but they've kind of gone dark haven't done a lot of updates and mm -hmm. they're kind of a direct competitor of an NFT marketplace which Power City has in the park an NFT um, platform. So my point is Telegram aided me in with something good and with something bad, but they were both helpful to realize I needed to probably not talk too much about this one coin until it proved to be, you know, upstanding and, and above board. And then the other one helped me to realize that, Hey, I think I need to pay more attention to this. So, I agree. Pin messages, telegram, very, very important. All right. 
Sprove, you're up with the back to back or the tenth pick overall. Um, uh, I would say a, a good tip and trick that I've recently, um, ever since the uh, interview that we did with Walrus, um, I started disconnecting my wallet every single time. Um, I believe is I believe it's very important to disconnect using the actual wallet and the, and even going to unrecked.app, I believe is what it is. Just going to one of those di disconnections and setting your allowances to zero if, or just going right in the MetaMask. Um, I think Luke, you did say going right into MetaMask and actually disconnecting from MetaMask. Now I do it every single time. If I connect or if I, or I use different wallets for different, um, different dApps. But even if, um, I'd make sure to disconnect. And if it's connected to multiple wallets, I see there's a new thing where you disconnect from the wallet right below it. It'll say disconnect from all wallets. So if you connect it one dap to multiple wallets, you can disconnect it from all those wallets at the same time. Um, if you go to the little dots in the top right corner, MetaMask, disconnect. And then if it's mo if it's connected to multiple dApps, you can choose disconnect from all, all wallets. So, yeah. Okay, I like that. That's a good one. Um, thoughts on that, Katie? Or is it Lindsay? Sorry. Oh, good. Um, if, you know, honestly, if you're, if you're going to use a you can you, you can bypass it with just using your hardware wallet too. You can mm -hmm. link your mask in your hardware wallet, and then and make sure, then you're double doubly making sure you're disconnected and really disconnected, as in not um, having internet access to your crypto at all. Not just like disconnecting it from and, and MetaMask, because then still MetaMask is like your your face of it, right? So mm -hmm. if you're in there, like you said, but you're in if you're in there doing business daily, and I'm talking about people that are like setting it, forgetting it, like that's you know, I mean, even if you can do that daily and disconnect from everything and just move everything from your hardware back and forth, right? That would be ideal. But if you're, I know, I know when you're in the business and you're and you're moving things daily, sometimes sometimes it's easy to forget to disconnect um that goes across so many ways in life but i mean mm -hmm. still here so don't forget to disconnect um disconnect your hardware wallet disconnect your mind you know all those kind of things but yeah totally yeah yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. It, it it's amazing the times I've helped people out, I go and look how many um, connections they have. So how many different websites or protocols they're connected to active connections. And I've seen one with over a hundred. And so it's such a good, it also keeps your mind on security. It also keeps you making sure that like you're not allowing any excess time on a certain website then is absolutely required or necessary for you to do whatever business you, you want to do so great great tip so all right we're at pick 11 or the second pick of the fourth round it's up to you Lindsay. don't store your information in a digital form write your read phrases down in analog pen if you need help keeping track of those use the track that's what it's for, right in the workbook. I gave you a crypto coin and token tracker so that you can see what price you bought it at, what price you sold. That's important for of your taxes. You don't want to depend on a middleman to fill out your 1099B. They're going to make it blank and they're gonna, it's going to cost you a lot at the end of the year because they'll leave that blank. It'll just say Bitcoin. It won't say how much you bought it for. So if you bought Bitcoin at 19000 and at the end of the year, Bitcoin they're going to take the 26 they're going to they're going to say they're not going to give you losses no you have to be able to input those numbers yourself so anyway your information write it down yep that's good uh spruve thoughts on that one um i uh, man taxes is such a such a touchy subject but yeah i, I totally agree you want to make sure um that you're and it was crazy is even though I agree with it, I'm still um, I still have my C phrases digital, but I have it. <laughs> but I have it like locked with a secret, you know, I have it locked with a secret code that I I barely even know. So I know nobody knows. I forget it sometimes. <laughs> I mean, but if you paste if you put your C phrase in a note on your phone, you better believe that note is not private. Do you think even if it's locked? I mean, 
I have access. Yes. And I'll say that because I've been exposed to so many different things in crypto. And I'm telling you that uh, this is a ledger. But just for example, at an airport, if I'm holding a ledger this big and I'm near your cell phone and I want your crypto, I'll get it. Mm. I will get it. So uh -oh. I'm, that's why I say don't keep those things digitally because there is, um, and there's been bugs linking from uh, on your mobile wallet on your mobile device too. MetaMask on there is a nightmare. Oh, I, I know it's convenient, but it's a, it's a nightmare. And so, yeah, I, I'm like, mm, please don't store those things digitally. Um, they might have to change your name to Lindsay the Hacker. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a flipper? I don't, it's not me. It's not me because I'm not the bad guy. And yeah. but I did, I sat down <laughs> and I did, I went and I was, I'm curious, man. I'm curious yeah. about everyone in my community. I went and I sat down with Homeland Security Enforcement and I mm. sat down in a seminar that they were giving and I listened to the things that they were saying and it blew my mind. So I'm just saying like, I'm not the bad guy. I'm not the one walking around. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the one hanging around the sick. Somebody else is. And they're not kind enough to tell you that they're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, if you think about what people have done to hack in, like, this is a weird topic, but there are celebrities that have been, like, they've hacked into the, the camera on their computer, and they've caught them when, you know, they were getting dressed or whatever. Like, it really inappropriate stuff. Okay, well, why would, they're doing that because they're, they're crazy, they're sick, but when it comes to the technological ability to hack, the incentive is behind huge amounts of money. So what I wanted to add to this is everybody out there needs to realize the very best way is to write it all down, put it into metal. But if you can put it on three different, like basically piece of paper, cut that piece of paper into three place in the three parts, put it two parts of it in different places mm. in your house and then one part in a safe place i would say maybe a parent or people say a safety deposit box i don't like that as much but if you can do that in metal now you need all three pieces you have two but they're hidden in different spots they're in your house if a fire happens well the, it's covered but mm -hmm. ultimately again the one group of people that i worry about the most is you you me Sprove, and Lindsay, because we are actually we're we're going to be targeted because they're going to assume oh you have a lot of crypto or oh you gave away crypto every single night which by the way 11 p.m eastern go to spruvy coins on youtube yeah. gives away <laughs> coins every night yeah. so we appreciate what you do in onboarding people because there's no better way than to help people get a little bit of crypto and so yeah. good for you but yeah those are the people i worry about people targeting like hey i know spruve has a lot because he gives away whether or not it's true or not like yeah. they'll just they'll just target you because mm -hmm. you're the most visible so mm -hmm. um yeah write them down get them in it's well worth the time the the only thing i would say too is my advice on that when you do write it down i typically recommend doing a new one because it's very hard like if you forget about oh i I gave it to this other person or, Oh, it's quite a, an older one. And I, I have it, uh, all the info on an old computer that got thrown in a landfill or got lost. Do a new one. So, you know, it's secure. I mean, a new, a new, uh, wallet. A new wallet. Yeah. I That's have a question. How many that. times have you recycled? We're well, not recycled, but how many times have you like dumped a whole entire wallet? Cause it's kind of hard. If you got like hex stakes on a wallet, how do you just, I not use that wallet anymore and then refresh and get a new one. Uh, great, great point with mining or staking. It's different. Or, Obviously you can't, you can't just get rid of it. I, I wouldn't ever recommend people. I guess I was talking about, I have, you know, whatever I, I have a million hex on this wallet and it's not staked or not, we're not mining it. Um, if you're going to, if if you have any doubt in your mind, if you don't, fine, but go and put it in metal. I'm just saying, if you're now taking the time to do everything right, let's make sure that there's no, not even 1% doubt in your mind that gotcha. that is secure. If you've had it for five years and you had a, a girlfriend that lived with you and it was a bad breakup and she knew about it, well, then maybe it's secure. Maybe it's not. Not. Damn, <laughs> are you reading my life?
<laughs> Damn. Uh, it, it could crazy. be the boyfriend too. Probably yeah. more likely the boyfriend. But anyways. I I Very good. I think like, damn, she does have that that connected to her phone. It, was she yeah. listen, does she snuggle with you and listen to crypto while you guys are? That, if, if if she does, that might be a good indicator to get those things off digitally. Like, does she have a password? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, she does. I did it. Put it uh, the the private key in token pocket, and she does have access to that wallet. But she wasn't really in crypto. I just gave her some Ethereum. Yeah. You were just onboarding. Yeah, just onboarding a little bit. <laughs> All right. what, if she, what if she does learn? What if she learns? And then I'm well, using then that wallet. Like, and then, just... then, you better, then you better hide yeah. your phrases on a piece of paper. Make three copies of that paper. Or like you said, metal. Metal but would be ideal. You know, water, fire, etc. And then mm-hmm. only, only a trusted loved one gets access to the from where the information is not the information itself but they have access to where the yeah. information is found if unfortunately something should happen to you um yeah I'm grateful to have that foresight before that happened in my life so um use that tracker use that use that getting started with crypto workbook i will send you a copy and i have pages it's downloadable it's printable you can print as many copies of those coin token trackers there's a wallet tracker so you can specifically track your wallets there's an exchange tracker for you to specifically track what exchanges you're interacting with that way if something happens that goes amiss you know and you're organized you know where everything is and you have it all written down easy at the accessible like easy at your fingertips cool to know. very good um we are now sure. at the point where we're at the last pick of the fourth round so we're at the 12th pick so i'll bring myself up i am at my wraparound so the 12th pick overall liquidity providing so many people are going to hear liquidity providing and be like well impermanent loss okay i'm actually saying liquidity providing and i'm saying it now because i want you to understand where we're at so we're not, I don't care what's going on with Hex. <laughs> Generally in the market, I believe there's still, there, there's been blood in the streets. I think there's going to be more blood. I think we're still in a bear market. Understanding where you're at in this four-year cycle, as much of that as we we have we, in regards to Bitcoin and Bitcoin's happening, which happens every four years. It'll happen again in about a year and two months or April, May of next year. That's when the supply, there's in, uh, Bitcoin inflates, it, the supply gets cut in half. So it's going to be cut in half. It's going to be around three. So they're going to, people are going to be uh, working to try to get uh, three Bitcoin. Um, and so there's going to be all this effort put into that. But there's another way. There's another way to understand how to get in and out of a position. And one of the most amazing innovations has been a version three or v3 of liquidity providing and so i encourage people to try to understand it and the easiest way is to find a channel that's that's dove into it and just watch them put everything on the screen watch them talk about getting into two coins that you like and utilizing those coins to put in a pool so that you can allow people to show up and swap one of those coins for the other. And so in crypto, if you want to get from one coin to another, there has to be a pool that has both of those. And so I basically never do swaps anymore. I will do single-sided liquidity on V3 and I will allow my position to be filled as it, as it moves through a certain range. And if this doesn't make any sense to you, it's okay. Understanding liquidity providing, but specifically V3 liquidity providing is very important. And it can, it can open up many opportunities for you getting in and out of positions. And also in a bear market, if you understand that oh, we're down and we're going to be moving sideways for a while, that's where yeah. liquidity providing is absolutely unbelievable. You can make incredible amount of yield and impermanent loss is less of a thing when you're at the 
bottom or towards this um, consolidation point where you're moving sideways at the end or bottom of a bear market as it tends to do. And it has been sort of doing over this last six, 12 months. So what are your guys' general thoughts on that? V3 liquidity providing, understanding it, learning. It. I have a quick question. Um, yeah. What is exactly your um, strategy to the ranges you create? Is it dependent upon the coins that you pick or do you have a, I'm only doing a, I'm a find the bottom to your best of your knowledge through TA. And then I only want from the, what I think the bottom is to a 10 X or to a 20 X or whatever. What is your, for both of you? That's a question for both of you. Go, go ahead, Lindsay. Um, I think that that depends on your unique. I I, I, I don't know for it. That depends on your unique situation. I don't necessarily participate in those things because I am more of a hodler. I, mm -hmm. um, and that is a position where I, you, you need to be able to be up and on it. And I got a lot of things yeah. going on. So yeah. no, it's not, that's not my priority right now, but um, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is very key. What Lindsay just said, if you're wanting to get something done and be done with it, it we always talk about like, Oh, what are the fees? What are the, your time? If, whatever your job is out there, you could stay after for 15 minutes and stay clocked in and earn a little bit of money, or you could clock out and you could be paying attention. Oh, the price is moving and you could spend 15 minutes of your time. Your time is money. It's a cliche, but that is literally like it, you, you can stay at work and earn extra money, or you could be doing this. You need to ask yourself, which is going to be more profitable for me. So that's the first thing. Second thing, Okay, so why do I do it? I do it to earn fees, but I do it when I specifically think, like if I think, oh, the market is up and running and going crazy, I will create just like a mining ladder or a staking ladder. I will create, you know, 10 different positions. But I, I am more, I want people to go towards mining or staking if they're trying to earn yield, but understanding V3 liquidity providing, I think for this podcast, I would say understanding that at the bottom of bear market, if you want to do single side uh, liquidity providing, that can be a way where to answer your questions. I'm just trying to capture where the price is right now. I like where the price is, but I, if it drops just a little bit, cause you can't, capture with v3 liquidity providing you can't capture where the price is it has to move so you have to go right below it and so i will make a very 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 tiny range just basically trying to get the price right below it and then as soon as it goes through that range i'll close mm -hmm. it because what happens with liquidity providing is if it goes if it goes through the range and then back up i've lost the coin so i'll maybe it's hex and maybe it's eth that's a common one that a lot of people do because everybody needs hex. Everybody needs ETH that has hex. They just need mm -hmm. it right now. And eventually they'll have other options, but um, yeah. So I, I try to, I have a certain, uh, I have certain groups of coins and I will, I, I also think it's a service. I'm providing people with the ability to easily come in and, swap these coins and so i will have a certain percentage of those coins of my total holdings that i say mm -hmm. these are dedicated just towards liquidity providing and then whatever the yield ends up being is just a bonus but that that's kind of the answer to that question is um i i typically will do single-sided liquidity put it right below and do the smallest range i can to just basically do a swap i'm essentially use, utilizing v3 lp single-sided to just swap from one coin to another yeah i got one thing too uh yeah like like how both of you like well well for luke for how you do it you're trying to capture the uh, capture it at a certain price so it's like a stop loss type of ordeal um but zen kind of zen i'm in zen and i've created some liquidity for zen um it's liquidity is always best at a sidewards moving if you're trying to capture the fees. Um, and my goal was to capture a, um, 
basically 100 percent of what of the zen side that i created i want so if i so say if i put 10 million in i want to earn 10 million in zen and feed so um for that uh that's kind of been my goal and i've used a tool called oh maybe i shouldn't tip it whatever uh metacrypt uh, is one thing that I use. You want to use analytics to to before. So it's kind of like the do your own research aspect of it before you even provide that liquidity. You can see about how much you'll get in fees and then uh, the projected amount of time that it will take you to get 100 percent of your stack back. So that's kind of what I utilize um, in V3 is the fees aspect. But it just depends. Like if it's hex, then I may just do it to where I want to capture it at that kind of how you said uh, Brazology kind of didn't capture that price point um but if he had to put it put a small range of 20 cent to 10 cent he would have captured at least some of those fees and had a little bit of hex at least at that at that point yeah yeah, yeah. even if he um, missed the price even if he missed the price point he would have it would have dipped in that range he would have got at least some of the fees and then it would have went back but he still would have had his hex plus some a little bit at that price yeah and that's true the yeah. only other thing that just is a little bit more advanced is just the impermanent loss just to make sure that if things yeah. don't go according to plan that mm. you're totally okay like at the very beginning people were doing zen hex and they, they yeah. saw it as an opportunity and someone popped into my chat when i did a live stream and they were like well i know it's going to go in this direction uh whatever the direction was at the time and so i'm going to do lp with these two and i'm hoping to get more hex out of it and I said, just be careful. You better be okay with get with having all Zen and turning yeah. all your hex into Zen because that is a possibility. Because yeah. they were doing a smaller range, and so mm-hmm. you're. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I think Brazology, um he he doesn't do a lot with that. But I recently spoke to him, and he he said that he's looking more into it as a way of um, trying to earn yield while staying liquid. Because that's that's the difficulty with mining is you're not you're not liquid, but that also mm-hmm. can be a blessing in disguise for most people. So, um, very good. Well, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was gonna say there are liquid staking protocols out there. You can hop on over and find them. You know, not all staking. Yeah. Is- mm-hmm. Do you have a good example of one that you like? Uh, Stater H uh, Bar staking. Stator Labs, liquid staking, like that one. Okay. Yeah. I'm I've heard up. of it, but I need to I need to dive in a little bit, learn more about it. I haven't dived in, but yeah. Okay. Well, we're at uh my last pick. We're at the 13th pick overall. So I will bring myself up here. What do I want to go with? All right. So, okay. We talked about this earlier, and this is kind of a hard one to explain, but I will do my best. So you hear people talk about diversification, and I understand, but I would say you at the beginning of your journey – if you're dealing with a very small amount of money diversification, my tip is to be diversified later on. And some people may disagree with this and that's okay. Um, I believe you at the beginning need to find some wins. You need to find a protocol that is true crypto and is going to, accomplish your goal and whatever that may be it might be anonymity it might be yield which hex would be good for yield not as good for being anonymous but you need to figure out okay what is crypto supposed to be what are the first principles do whatever i want to get involved with do they follow those first principles what is my end goal and if it's making more money then ultimately i would say two to three projects and and maybe even one if you're brave. But my experience was ETH to hex and then being into about a half dozen or so projects. And I've had a really good experience and have been quite profitable over the last five years, but I don't think there 
could have been as much success or profit if I would have decided to spread it out amongst 10 different coins. So I would say that diversification is something that comes once you have gained wealth, then it's about protecting your wealth. When you're trying to gain that wealth, when you're coming from nothing, you need to hit home runs. And I'm okay with saying one is, it is too narrow, but I think you need to, especially at the beginning when most people are, are not dealing with a lot of money, you need to isolate your focus on two to three uh, maximum. So my pick is the opposite of diversification. It is focus in on projects and daily cost average into a specific project or two or three and to not diversify at this point in your journey if you're at the beginning of your crypto journey. What are you guys' thoughts? Um, I would say I, I, you kind of changed my outlook on it because I was always big on diversification. Um, but I would like to know like what your specific dollar amount is for, until you diversify. Uh, good question. So a dollar amount. So like when I, uh, December 11th of 2019, I did 10 grand in a hex and I told myself that if I uh, like uh, an amount that just would change me being into hex forever, like I'm, I'm basically not going to touch that money, but basically if that amount turns into like after taxes, even if I just did it the, the worst possible way after taxes and everything, I could live the way I live now, pay off all debt and live for 50 years. That amount basically is $10 million. So I looked at it and said, okay, so what does that end up being like a thousand X, right? Mm -hmm. If that does, then I'm going to shift my mindset it's because I think we're all, nobody really, I don't want to retire. I want to keep working. I love what I'm doing. But if I have the opportunity to basically guarantee that everything is taken care of, that's when I could justify shifting uh, for at least a percentage of what I have in shifting my strategy from being all in on this to taking, you know, 50% of it out and diversifying just to protect the wealth. So I, I, I say when it's a, a chunk of money that could actually retire you, then yeah, I think, I think you've got to take uh, half of it and, and diversify it. But I, Ooh. even saying that, I, uh, I mean, Hex has been very, very, very good to me. And I, I, I just believe in it more than the other things. And I, um, again, diversification is about securing, making sure that, you know, if something crazy, unforeseen, out of the hands of even Richard Hart, something that I can't even imagine, if that happens, then I've protected that chunk. So I, I would say, yeah, retirement amount of money. I don't know. What are okay. your thoughts, Proof? Uh, like, what's your amount of money know. that would be? Uh, same. I don't know. Some, it's got to be. It would have to be life changing. It's got to be like life changing. I would say like. Cause I feel like I can do. I feel like that I diversify with a couple thousand, but ten million. I don't know, man. I think ten million is a good number. I feel like twenty. I feel like twenty, thirty million. Uh, another fifty years. Am I even going to be alive? But uh, but that's what you got got to prepare for is yeah being alive that long. Let me word it a different way. The biggest thing is having a plan. This is really what Lizzie does a good job with getting people like basically financial planning with crypto. That's what, what she's doing. And it's so important because it's got to be lofty goals. If they, if you're literally going to switch, like I'm saying, don't diversify. You've got to hit home runs. And uh, by the way, it used to just be one, but then if you find a guy who created a coin that, that did a 10,000 X and now he's creating another coin that solves a different problem. Well, it would be hypocritical of me to say just one. And so when I say a couple, like I, I more believe in this one specific founder. Like if, if Vitalik decided, Oh, I'm going to go and do this other project. 
I probably would say, well, the track record's so good that I, I, I think I will support the additional thing that he does. It's worth taking, uh, taking a little bit of risk on. So, yeah, I think uh, my strategy is find things you really believe in that you think are going to do great if your goal is making money and go all in on that. Because if you're wrong, most of us have plenty of time to recoup it. And so, mm -hmm. again, we're talking to people with little amounts of money, trying to turn it into shifting to the next stage of life where they're preserving their money. But, um, yeah. All right. Let's go to. I don't know, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts, Lizzie? She is. I, I'm, I'm on board with that. If you're starting, let's say, like, let's say with a minimal amount, right? Because with fees and a hard, uh, cold, excuse me, cold storage wallet, cold storage wallet right off the gate, you're already spending $200. Mm -hmm. And then with fees, let's say you're spending another, I don't know, gas is cheap that day. You're spending $50 for all of your staking, mining, minting, publishing, scripting, whatever you're doing. Yeah. So we're starting off with two grand. I would suggest no, no less, or I would suggest no more than three. And that would be a great entry way to get some blue chip coins and also look into some altcoins. Now we have a we have we have a common favorite altcoin here. There will be more altcoins coming, but really to have a blue chip coin in there that does have utility, um, whether whether we like utility of it or not, it's there's still some that aren't going anywhere anytime soon, I mean, and we do need them for, for, for to make moves on other projects. So I say like two or three, put them in there, and, you, and they collect before you even know it. And when you're ready to diversify into more, it's because you've taken that your comfort level, um, and perhaps you've taken that two two thousand dollars and you've gotten some yield from it, and then you have some extra room to diversify into four or five. And I like what you said: pick an ecosystem that you know. Pick an well, well that you think you know, maybe right? Mm -hmm. yeah. an ecosystem that you feel comfortable with. And making the most too. If you see something like Exit has done and performed so well, it's not guaranteed, but chances are likely that the following product or project that's following will have some sort of shadow effect with. It. So we don't know, and that's a beautiful part of this. If there's technical analysis, manipulative analysis, straight off. Woo! Let's do it. So <laughs> yeah, no. I love it. Well, um. On that, let's go to uh, the last pick with the 14th pick overall. <laughs> don't, don't buy green candles. Everything retraces. They might smell nice, look pretty, but at the end of the day, everything retraces. So, you know, don't. Don't feel like if you're afraid you're going to miss out, then that is the perfect time to stop right there. Because if you're afraid, you're making an emotional decision. Detach your emotions from your finances. Yeah. I like uh, that. I hate it because uh, just so been, I just been every single time I do that because I follow that too. I don't believe in buying two X's or three X's, but when I see it four X again, I just be like, oh, I, I hate it. I hate not FOMOing, but. Um, Wait, it's just, no it is, it, and I just have yeah. to wait on it. But some, I just hate that sometimes you even miss it again because you're like you take your eyes off of it, and then you miss the retrace, and then it's back up again. And ah, I hate not buying green candles, but I don't. I believe I believe yes, that is important to not buy green candles, but I just hate it. It's it is so hard. The emotions that drive these cycles and crypto. I mean, I had crypto profeta on and, and uh, this is not a new idea, but he did a really good job creating a graph of the emotions that, that drive crypto. And, and when we see these green candles, like there's a reason that people end up getting in. They're like, every time I get in and then it, it crashes down. And it's like, yeah, because mm -hmm. you heard about it. And then you saw the candles and then you exactly. became exit liquidity. Like the, all that n news for the people who were really paying attention had like big amounts of money that would move the price chart. Well, mm -hmm. they were waiting. They got in early. And as soon as the hype got to the point where you saw it and then bought it, then they got out. 
because that's typically it's the opposite. However you typically initially feel you should probably do the opposite. Like, Oh, I'm excited. Let's get in green candles everywhere. Yeah. Probably wait. And like that's right now, <laughs> yeah, right now crypto's dead. Like it's the U S we're never going to have any innovation. There's not going to be crypto, anything in the U S the banks are done. You're not going to be able to get your money off on ramp on ramp. It's over. Goodbye. It's probably a good buying opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, it's hard. that's exactly it. That is, yeah. the, that is okay. So if you look at the conversations or the headlines that were around in the recent bubble, like let's just talk about the last technical, tech bubble that popped off. Let's talk about dot com. So like so smart tokens, smart contracts, smart money, digital money was created in 1995. Mm -hmm. Where were the headlines around digital cash? Digital cash is in mm -hmm. the paperwork. It, I, I did a stream about it a couple of weeks ago. Digital cash, yeah. 1995. So we've been dealing with these things for a lot long. They're just wearing uh they're they're wearing different now. So if you look back and historically see what happened and what the news lines were, what the headlines were around dot com, it was Y2K, everything's going to crash, this is garbage, this is terrible tech, this cyber attacks coming. Duh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, patterns repeat, I just say like patterns repeat themselves. And when you're seeing green candles and then you're seeing retracement from those green candles, know that markets are cyclical. And what are what are cycles? They're, you know, they Circle. Yeah, exactly. It comes around. Yeah, and how Richard Hart? Oh, my bad. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just saying how Richard Hart sell, said people love to buy tops and sell bottoms. So yeah. that's the ninety-six percent of people who are not using crypto on a daily. When they hear about something, <clears throat> the <clears throat> excuse me, the four percent that are in crypto, we know buy the rumor, sell the news. The 96% love to buy tops and sell bottoms. They do the exact opposite. They sell the rumor and buy the news. It's like buying retail versus buying wholesale. Mm -hmm. And if you're familiar with that process, um, a retail wholesale is allegedly 50% of what you are paying for retail. And when mm -hmm. you are buying those big green candles, you are buying retail prices. When you're buying the retracement, you could perhaps be getting that wholesale or at cost. So. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's a, that's a very good way of understanding. But getting that great discount comes at a cost and it's an emotional cost of you taming it basically being unemotional. And when we trade, we say, do not trade by emotion. And what we mean is the emotion that is natural, that's exciting. Like if, if it's hard to listen to crypto on YouTube at certain times mm -hmm. and easy at other times, my guess is when the prices are just, hey, my hex doubled in a day or, hey, my hex has gone up 5x since the beginning of the year. OK, well, guess what? Daily cost average is fine. I'm always going to say because we have to have certain principles that are always going to work for us. But at the end of the day, if your emotions are telling you one thing, it's easy to listen to. It's exciting now. It's probably a time to hold or to DCA out possibly. But yeah, it's just make sure that you understand your emotions and what they mean on the broader market spectrum. So um, mm -hmm. very good. You are up for the final pick overall, Spruve. All right. Um, which one did I pick? Did I not? Oh, following prominent people on Twitter, <clears throat> utilizing your resources. It kind of goes hand in hand when using Telegram daily. Twitter is the other um resource that is very prominent within the crypto community and you want to make sure to use utilize it daily following people that you like richard hart for instance jack levin following the people especially the creator of the token for updates or even the page of the token whether it be a um hex crypto news channel or the actual hex crypto uh twitter you want to make sure to stay on the up and up as far as news um, because just talking about the last thing that we were just talking about, buying the rumor and selling the news, this will give you the upper hand. It's kind of uh, it's kind of almost like um, insider news on a coin of knowing when to sell. It's like crypto is kind of crazy because everything is about the clout, basically. The price is clout based. So the more people that know about it, the more people that talk about it, the higher the price will go. 
Um, and once you and you can base that off of engagements, the more retweets that something gets, the more likes, the more views. Um, you can kind of base base it off of when it'll, it'll be a good time to take a little bit of profit. So there we go. Very following good. prominent people, not even prominent people, but following prominent um pages on Twitter. Yeah, and that's one key thing to understand is there's people, but then there's also the coin. So you have Richard Hart, founder of Hex, and then you have actual like there's a hex token guy who runs that there's different mm -hmm. pages and there's like, you know, even fun pages. Like there's a hex flex one. There's a Richard Hart was right. If you go over to uh, let's use Trevon, give him a little love. Um, there's Trevon's personal channel. There's mm -hmm. more token. There's buy more token. There's mm -hmm. different. If you really want to get immersed into like a meme coin, like more then you need to be subscribed to a couple different you need there, there's the token there's <clears throat> uh you're gonna get different things from the founder then from the token then from maybe one that's just shilling so mm -hmm. understand what the purpose of that uh twitter account is and make sure that specifically you have notifications on like if you think trevon's my guy have notifications on for his personal Twitter so you can know when he says anything. And that's mm -hmm. one of the best ways to learn. Figure out the people who are prominent or important in crypto in your eyes. Get the notifications and write down every word you don't know and research mm -hmm. it and read it over and over again. And have a little list in your notes of words you don't know and write those definitions and read them. And then once you have it, erase it out of your notes. And so... I think that's a great one. I absolutely love this community. It is full of shysters and people who are going to scam you and lead you down a wrong path. Um, you know, I just watched an interview with me, Kevin. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't talk negative about a lot of people, but I have huge problems with me, Kevin. I think he interviewed Richard Hart and it was absolutely like Richard Hart was the scammer. And I, yeah. I couldn't feel more opposite about that. And, it's just one guy plays the game to try to look well, and one guy doesn't. And Twitter has helped illuminate my opinion on that individual person because you can read all their thoughts. They just they put out their thoughts, sometimes unfiltered, mm -hmm. and it gives you a good idea whether or not you want to be following them, like not following their Twitter, but following them with their advice because he's a good example of somebody that's constantly giving financial advice. And um, I think a lot of it has led people in the wrong direction. Um, but you need to decide that. No financial advice, is, as we have to say. Um, but these are a bunch of tips and tricks to try to help you figure out what you want to be your next step on your financial journey, what you want to ultimately do in crypto. And hopefully these have been helpful so that you don't make some of the more common mistakes. Um, I think if we missed anything, please let us know in the comments. Um, we're here every Monday. We really, I want to say thank you so very much, Lindsay, for doing this short notice. It was great. I appreciate it. Go watch your episode earlier today. Vibra Finance. Please go, go check it out. Go subscribe. Uh, as always, Go subscribe to Spruvy Coins with an S on YouTube, with a Z yeah. on Twitter. And yeah. is there anything else you guys want to shill before we head out? Zen Vampire Song coming out this weekend. I finally had, got somebody to do the GIF. So this weekend. Good. Good. All right. Oh, that. That good. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's, I mean, I've already heard a little bit of it. A lot of us have. It's going to be awesome, though. So good for yeah. you, Spruf. That's great. Um, yeah. Hey, thank you guys so very much. Was there anything you wanted to add, Lindsay? Um, just follow me on Fiber Finance. You can follow me on Twitter. Follow me on YouTube. Download the workbook. Print out the pages. Write down the dang seed phrases. Don't lose your keys. Don't lose your crypto. Yay. Love it. If you do those things, you will have a much better time in crypto. So, all right. Yeah. Yes. All right. You guys, you we'll guys. see you in the next one. Thank you. As always.